Hi everyone, welcome to Norfolk. Here I am in uh, the village of Burnham Market. This is my accommodation uh, for the next few days. And um, just looking around at the varying cottages and views across the marshes, um, the lovely windmills that you get here on the North Norfolk coast. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. And of course, um, I will be showing you um, lots of um, sketches and paintings that I do along the way. Well, I've just come up the little lane heading towards the coast and uh, we've got some, some lovely views from here of the coast and in particular, um, Tower Mill in the distance. I don't know whether you can quite see that, but um, uh, with the naked eye, it's a, it's a lovely, uh, lovely view. Well, that's the subject in the distance, and there's the drawing. Needs really attention in respect of uh, tone values. But other than that, we can uh, produce a nice watercolour. Well, hi everyone. I've just got returned from a lovely walk, um, heading off out to the coast from Burnham Market. And um, in my Pink the Pink sketchbook, I made a lovely sketch of Tower Mill. And obviously it, uh, um, it's a tonal sketch. I didn't put any colour down. But hopefully you can see, um, see that. It's, um, it's done in graphite pencil. So I've used watercolour to actually um, um, enhance the tones. Um, it's something that I enjoy doing an awful lot um, when, uh, when I'm out um, in varying locations. And I like to feel the essence of the day and, and also the feeling of the architecture. And that's why I'm positioned in front of this lovely um, flint stone wall that is traditional here in North Norfolk. Um, it's part of my accommodation. And uh, now I'm going to um, try to use a bit of memory plus the use of the sketch uh, to produce um, a fairly quick and easy watercolour impression of the scene I've seen this morning when I was out. Well there's my basic setup. Um, I've got the drawing on, a, on my chair. I've got the paints and brushes already and of course the ease of setup um, at a slight angle so that I can um, achieve the required washes and um, basically that's it. So here we go. Okay, well here we go. It's turned uh, rather chilly here on the North Norfolk coast um, but I do love being outside to, to paint these subjects. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Payne's Grey for the grey areas um, of the uh, sky. And I, it's, it was that type of day really, that kind of day. It was quite grey and um, lots of these clouds running across the sky. Um, so I decided to put them in, in, in their form. And look at the way I'm running the brush across the paper. And as they go away, it's smaller in the distance, larger as you come forward. There we go. It'll be too, too even. Now I'm going to use um, a somewhat weaker mix of Payne's Grey. Just weaken it off to, well that's not all that weak, but there you go just to soften the undersides of some of these clouds before they dry. Not all of them, but some of them. There you go. And now an even weaker section up the top there, like that. Some blue will be added, because I like to have a little blue in the, in the colour, purely to um, allow the uh, feeling of light, um, you know, coming through as you would normally get. I'm using ultramarine for that, for the blue patches. And there'll be one particularly strong blue, um, or reasonably strong, and that is going to be there. 
There we go. Thought about that as quick as that. The rest will be more subtle uh, in in colour. Just trying to um, imagine and think of where the clouds lay at that particular time of day when I was there. More or less like that really, you know. Just loosening that up just a touch. It's not ideal, but there's just a band there. There we go. That's better. That's improved that. And I think that probably is sufficient. Just a bit of warmth required. I'm using light red for this. Um, because I'm going to use light red for the buildings. So a bit of light red going in to parts of the clouds. Here and there. Um, purely to give a sense of sort of coming together of the sky and of course the um, the buildings that will go in shortly there we are but overall the building is uh, the mill sits there in strong sunlight uh, against this cloudy section just get rid of the white that side okay now I'm going to paint the landscape ultramarine with a bit, bit of raw sienna too much just a little bit of raw sienna just to try and pick up the green in actual fact it's not enough raw sienna so let's add raw sienna there you go that's better just a little bit of raw sienna in there with a touch of the other color that we have that's it very very weak let's just go touch more of that side there we go that's better a little bit more there don't want to be too dark with that now to that I'm adding the ultramarine again with a little light red to pick up the deep dark trees on the horizon and for this I need quite a strong blue grey and um, seem to think that they sort of worked along there like that and they're blurring up into the landscape and then just a small line of them you can actually see the sea there somewhere so that's sort of doubling up as the sea and what have you there we are now a bit more yellow in that a bit more raw sienna just picking up some more local greens within those blues a um, little bit there a little bit there or oh, a bit on the horizon there not sure what that is but there you go that's gone in nicely now as we work forward we can use the cadmium yellow in that mix to get a slightly more greeny color there just a little section there a little bit into that let's pull that forward and then in the foreground it's quite a quite a nice green actually so we're using plenty of cadmium yellow a little bit of ultramarine and I'm painting the way the actual field went just like that really it goes towards this area then heads off and that is the first stage of painting this lovely little watercolour. Now while that's drying, I'm going to try and pick up some colour onto the buildings. Um, some are darker and some are lighter than others. Um, and that's um, um, the beauty of, of uh, watercolour painting really. You can pick up the varying tones within the um, the buildings and uh, the lights and the darks and the varying sections of the buildings that uh, really um, radiate um, warmth really in the distance and some are lighter some are darker some are little little on the greeny uh, color see that's more flint so that's more of a flint that's more of a flint area um, 
This is a bit more red. Nice to have a bit of a red punch there. There we go. And, and that can be a little red. And what have we got there? Right, so that's all part of a roof area. So is that. So is that. There we are. Look at that. You know, it looks a bit picky at the moment, but we shape it later on. Now I'm going to do the trees around those areas. Now, and the first thing you need to do for that is I'm going in with ultramarine, ultramarine blue with cadmium yellow, which is a nice mix, and a touch of burnt sienna. Try burnt umber, sorry. So let, let's try the burnt umber in that just to knock it back just a touch and I've got that little area there that's stepping along the edge of that uh, that field and that's just growing up into that just nicely it's exactly what I wanted um, to pick up and just a little bit now I'm going on the outside edges here of that just before I go in with some darker colour around the building. I'm not doing the mill itself just yet. So that sort of finishes there like that. Maybe another little tree there. That's good. Now, now this is where I need to go dark. So I'm adding more burnt umber, more ultramarine, very little cadmium yellow. I'm trying to pick up more tones on this one rather than um, colour I suppose if you like to treat it that way if you like to call it that more of a tonal scene um, so that goes in there like that leave that because that we don't want that to blend too much with the building I'm trying to just leave a touch on the outside edge and it's all very impressionistic and that's what makes these watercolors so um, attractive well to me anyway you know it's that it's that um, it's those little light edges against the darks there's a chimney there stands up against the dark tree in the background then of course along the front here we have some more dark areas um, that run across the front of that building. Uh, that's a tree. It's across the front. There you go. Look at that. Um, now I'm using Windsor Blue, Prussian Blue if you wish, and Burnt Umber. Because that will give me a really, really dark green. And I want to hold on to that for this tree there. and picking up the roofs line the roof line there it's all a good thing to do and that roof line there there we go lovely fresh clean watercolors this is what we're looking for I'm not looking for anything fussy at all uh, freshness and cleanness of color and if you can get the least um, the least you can paint, you know, the least you do, the better, the cleaner the look of the watercolour. And that's going to be quite dark, and that bit's going to be quite dark. So, but other than that, that's uh, pretty much it. Now, Royal Sienna's going in. Because I want to create a slightly different feel to this. Um, and I'm going to soften that edge shortly. Um, weaker too, more water, considerably more water now, just at the top to try and soften that, tops of those trees, um, that area there, top of that roof of that building, that one there, and finishing sort of there really, where there's another tree, I can almost blend with that, 
Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's pretty much as I saw it. Bit of yellow now. Cadmium yellow going in for the brighter areas of greenery there. And there is just another bright area of green just there. Oh, and that dark area can come down there. So you pull that colour in and that heads down between those two buildings. There isn't a gap there, but I'm sure nobody's ever going to know. And a little bit more looser feel to the top. You know, vary your, your greens. That's always the best thing to do when you're painting these sort of subjects. Um, always important that you do that. Um, now I'm adding more blue again because I want to give sort of like a feeling of conifers there because they were there. So I'm using the point of the brush um, just to try and pick up that feeling of these tall fir trees of some sort. There was three so I'm putting three in, tall, medium and short one. Then, funny enough, I'm using burnt umber now with a little light red, which does seem strange, but I want to create a lighter feel underneath that area. So it's sort of like that. Now I'm adding winds of blue to that that will give me a blue green because it's going out of picture now I've got to go dark again so all I do winds of blue cadmium yellow burnt umber and that then picks up in all little areas just before it dries to try and get a bit of, um, how can I put it, tonal difference between the darks and the lights. There we are. And I think we're getting towards the end of that stage of the painting. And that finishes pretty much there. Good. Okay, now we're going to paint in a little of the foreground now. And this is Burnt Umber, Payne's Grey, and Prussian Blue. So it's not a brilliant sort of a... Just take a bit off that brush, because I want to pick up a feeling of texture to start with. That's better. See the way the brush is shaped? And I'll pick up the different angles of that. Will be dark shortly, but let's just put in the lights. Okay, now we're using more brown, more Payne's Grey to get some really dark touches in this um, hedging as we run away. Not everywhere, to leave some little touches there unpainted. Quite, quite a legitimate thing to do when you're painting these subjects. And we're going to run right the way through, tapering as we go, because that gives us depth. It's the very thing that gives you depth. Without that taper, you haven't got depth. Perfect. Now I'm gonna lose a lot of moisture from the brush, and I'm adding cadmium yellow in quite a strong mix. So it's got those other three colours there but it's mainly cadmium yellow because I want to paint in quite a rich tone of tree at that point. Just there. It was there so we may as well put it in. There we go. Now I add to that cadmium yellow I add winter blue and a touch of Prussian blue 
or actually it's just let's put a bit of Payne's grey in there there you go burnt umber Payne's grey I'm using a lot of Payne's grey today um, uh, I don't know why it sort of had a bit of influence on what I saw there probably that's the good thing about painting you know you you you, you when you're out in the field you you see different colors and it, it, it has a knock-on effect when you come to paint um, the, the landscape right now I'm going to look at the mill itself now the mill has actually been um, slightly um, um, it, it, it is brick but it has a, a dark coating to it um, so we need to make certain that when we paint this, we get it upright. There's a slight angle there, like that. And I'm using, and I'm pulling down like that, and pulling down like that, to try and pick up the sails. Now you could use masking fluid for this. I know some people would, um, but initially, I'm actually going in without well not initially I just I'm not going to use it basically um, and uh, that I feel probably does it I'm using more blue now because I want to get a little darker on this back edge burnt umber ultramarine blue maybe a, another color in there but basically that's all it is and then we have the surrounding railings, the base. Make certain that mill stands upright, so I'm going to have to pull that back just a touch more like that. That's better. And also, that must be higher. That's probably the reason why it doesn't look quite right. That's it. That's pretty perfect. That door is a little lower, and the fence and the surrounding gantry is a little lower too. Right, and the gantry at that point is shown like that. And there's a window there on the door. Now that, to me, is all that you need. And then you have sections in between. And if you can get the brush shaped to produce those, just do that line first, and then we'll do this line afterwards. There we go. And that, to me, is all you really need to do. Um, just cut those out a little. Don't want them too large. Just an impression. There's a window there, but whether we show that because it does interfere with the sails themselves and in actual fact make those sails a little thinner a little more narrow and a bit straight edged there we are and that comes up there like that perfect now the actual cap will be somewhat um lighter in as much as it's um in it's white but of course it is white but it's it's in silhouette against the sky and that's what we've got to show we've got to also be aware there is a cap at the top we've also got to be aware of where the sails come and of course the fan tail always a lovely feature of these of windmills particularly here in Norfolk and the, the the gantry that it sits on comes out like that good just going to lift off a little bit of color because it is a little dark for my liking particularly on the sunlit side there see the way lifting off gives it um, a much better feel to the whole thing 
bit of lifting off there but it will dry back considerably or and maybe just about see that side yep now we're going to paint the sails now this is um, not an easy area to paint but keep it simple make it very narrow to start with widening as it comes in typical the way these sail supports are and then just some little touches running across like that for the veins times I've messed these up by overdoing the whole thing like that and then of course a couple of uprights like that just to indicate the turn of the sail because these are not necessarily all flat there we are look at the way it majestically stands there um, in the uh, along the skyline which is exactly as I saw it today now obviously those are dark against the light but those are light against the dark and one thing I haven't put in yet which I'm going to is the lower part of the mill that will be underneath there and not a great deal to be seen there but and that's that and there again that's the tower mill put in now we're going to attend to um, some of the windows on these um, buildings treating them very simply still a little bit wet in places which to some extent is of benefit um, to the way I'm painting them um, oh, and there's another one in the lower area there uh, just really looking at, uh, at the subject in hand on the drawing really uh, that's all that's needed there then finally the shadows and for that I'm going to use cobalt blue this time And I'm going to use light red. Quite a subtle shadow. Don't want it to be too powerful. It's a cloudy day, but um, don't want the shadow to be too powerful. That's why I'm using those two colours. I must have a bit of strength. Don't want to go too, um, too weak with it. Where are these shadows? Well, there's one there. There's another one that runs across the bottom there. That's good, nice. Another one that runs down there. Bit of shadow work there. Touch down there. I want to touch down there. Uh, touch down that part of the building and across the front. Quite a bit there. A bit across the front. I think there's a window or two there. A little bit there just to show that and all of a sudden the buildings begin to stand out in in uh, warm sort of sunlight now I'm just going to use almost neat cobalt blue now just for a couple of one or two of these gable ends because they're not in full sunlight they're not in full shadow but they're not in full sunlight because of the way they actually lay and that chimney as well bring that across there we are just bring that down and there's also a shadow there there and there across there and all of a sudden they spring into light one or two little touches here and there just to pull it all together um, good one or two finishing touches 
Well I did see some geese in the distance so I'm going to put those in pretty much like that it's that time of year for the geese to to be sort of teaming up and uh, and spreading across the surface just got to lift that away there we go make them more distant that's it see the way I've softened that just to make them a bit more distant I want that to be too heavy. Perfect, so it's the geese going away into the distance. Then, finally, ultramarine with burnt umber, but mainly ultramarine, I suppose, for the very little sort of shadowy touches that, that make or break pictures like these along the edge of the field there that some bits of shadow bits and bits and pieces going on a bit more burnt umber now a bit more brown going in Just too spiky bit see how it's making that that um, foreground tree there quite dark also want to darken up a little touch there so I'm using this as an aid to darken and to to create lights and darks within the landscape that will um, ultimately give punch to certain parts of this build uh, or these buildings and of course the landscape itself a little bit more here we've got just a touch more there as it runs out of picture but then after that it's got to be softened so I'm using just a damp brush just to soften that so it runs away without interfering with the view of the picture um, and then finally burnt umber very little water with that for these sort of whatever they are you know a lot of people say to me what are they crop markings well you tell me you know it's it's all a matter of um of uh, you know it's it's a time of year where they have already um have the crop in um but um you know uh um, not sure what the crop was either um, but that and the reason for this is to pull the eye towards that right hand side and that's why I'm using large brush strokes in the foreground just pulling them across much weaker in the distance a bit more water going in for um, an area runs across there like that just to break that up um, could be a cloud shadow quite likely is um, and uh, touch of brown I like that bit of light there so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to put in a, my normal splash of red um, just need red to pull the eye towards those buildings a little trick that um, is often used by lots of artists but in particular John Constable use these little splashes of red here and there um, just to pull the eye towards a particular viewpoint uh, mustn't overdo that because you know it was it's not in the landscape but it's certainly uh, aids the, um, the the composition now finally I'm using the large brush again just to sweep a little foreground um, shadow just across the foreground area I'm using a bit of light red in this with a touch of ultramarine um, 
and uh, it's got to sweep across sort of there there like that and then we're going in with blue on this side just to tone it back and then pull it forward like that a little bit darker there and all of a sudden you say that has got to be sufficient before you spoil the painting we'll allow that to dry take the surround away and we'll see what we've got well there we are I've just pulled away from the scene just a touch uh, just so you can see the surround just going to sign it in the bottom right hand corner in the paint that I've used my normal sort of way of sort of stating my claim to this particular piece of work uh, to authenticate the whole thing really so there you have it tower mill on the north norfolk coast the, actually following around by the coast road so you've got all the mill buildings plus tower mill standing up there rather majestic against the skyline well there you have it starting off with a pencil sketch made during the day um, and ending up with um, quite a nice little uh, watercolour showing Tower Mill here um, on the North Norfolk coast um, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed that video um, if you have please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so click the link bottom right hand corner and in the meantime happy painting and we'll see you all again very very soon thank you very much for watching